Hey everybody, it's Ernest with uh, Garden South at Jitterbug Farms. It is the near about the end of the day, so the light's starting to drop. So hopefully not too big of a shadow, but um, sitting in the back of my truck and um, decided I was gonna go ahead and plant some bulbs today. I wanted to do a whole segment of bulbs um, and I'm, I'm probably gonna still do that. It'll be information late probably but um still information you can use i think um especially planning things for spring and maybe even to next year and kind of let you know what i'm what i'm doing um i've gotten more and more into spring flowering bulbs tulips daffodils narcissus hyacinths crocus um, and i started to get into more of these specialty bulbs because they're really carefree um once you get them established now tulips they don't they don't really come back as well here. Uh, some of the varieties do come back um, okay. Triumph tulips, um, the giant, um, uh, the giant Darwin tulips come back. So I, I do plant quite a bit of those just to kind of see what that is. Um, but the color palettes are a little limited on those. So specialty tulips, I kind of just treat them like annuals. But um, the things that I'm planting today are more fragile. Um, outside of the ground so in other words they don't like to be in dry storage for a while so I have a little more time especially for daffodils and tulips so um, I want to get these planted today so the bulbs I'm planting today um, are called trout lilies and they are Ethronium pagoda is the variety and they kind of look like this right here so I was able to pick these up um, from Van Bloom um, I ordered them wholesale through them and um, ordered two cases of them. Uh, I ordered that and a few other things. Um, I also ordered uh, this type of fritillaria called Ario marginata, which is like a, vari a variegated tall crown imperial. Um, this has like a tangerine type bloom with the bells that kind of hang down. I'll try to get some pictures and pop some pictures of that up there. It's a really pretty flower. They come in these giant paper bags and they have kind of a skunky smell. Um, any type of the fritillarias don't like to be out of the ground for long periods of time. So um, the ground is cool enough now uh, to get some root growth um, and get them, get them established before the winter. And those are actually planted very deeply. So uh, the fritillarias are. Um, but I want to go ahead and get these planted in the ground. So I just thought I'd do a quick uh, five minute video on these and let you know I'm going to plant these at the road entrance into my property um, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, in the springtime, it is very dappled shade. So pagodas like um, kind of moist dappled shade. Now the area is not very moist. Um, I make it moist by adding, uh, by adding uh, irrigation there. Um, so that's easy to kind of do there. Um, this says they get 10 to 14 inches high. It's a great naturalizer and they bloom mid spring. Um, in that area, I've got um, some yellow columbine. Um, I've got some hellebore in that area. Um, fall blooming anemones are in that area. Um, I've got some, some arborvitae planted along there. Uh, that area was logged about four or five years ago. Uh, so there's not a lot of, of, of um, um, coverage anymore. So um, I plan to, uh, I wanted that area a little more, more private and a little more pretty when you come into the driveway there. So um, I cut some big urns and things uh, in that entrance way and I kind of, I kind of fixed that up. So when people pull in, um, mostly UPS drivers and FedEx drivers um, and family, it's not always um, just a dry, ugly looking area. So, so I'll be planting these today. Um, it does say plant them in zones eight through 10, November, December. Um, but again, like I said, outside of the ground, they're kind of fragile. I wanna go ahead and get them in the ground. Where is zone seven B in Sanford, North Carolina? So um, it says zone five through seven, uh, September, November, it's November 1st. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the ground. And then um, about the same for the um, fritillaria. I'm going to go ahead and put those in the ground now. I only have nine of these. This bulb is extremely expensive. Extremely expensive. So, um, and it's very hard to get a hold of. Um, so, I did order 
I want to say 36 of them from Van Bloom, but they sold out. Boom, just like that. So, um, you can kind of see in the back of the truck, um, these are bulbs that have just literally shipped in. I've got bulbs that were delivered to the greenhouse. I had to go pick them up, put them in storage. I have peonies delivered. They're ready to be put in the ground. I haven't got time to do that yet. Um, I've got uh, two or three more shipments of bulbs that still haven't gotten here. I try to push them out to the middle of November, so I don't have to worry about storing all of those yet. Uh, but a lot to do, and a lot of the beds have to be cleaned up um, still and get ready for for that type of planting. So um, this is what the this is how they come actually from Van Bloom. You might be able to find these in the retail stores still, um, but you get three little bulbs like that. Um, I would think they probably retail between six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, depending on the person that retails them. Um, and the bulb looks like a little date to me, like one of those little, you know, dates or Brazil nut or something like that. Um, and so you just pop them down in the ground. Um, it says space them about four to five inches apart and you plant them twice the height of the bulb. So I'm probably going to plant this about four inches down and that's about it. And um, normally I would put a spoma bulb tone with that. Um, but that area has just been recently um, toned with uh, biotone and even some plant tone. Um, and I'll show you kind of when, I'm, when I get ready to go plant those things, how, how I'm going to space them out and where I'm going to put them out. Okay, so we'll pick up from there.